Hey guys, Gaza TV here with another Path of Exile video, and in today's video, we're gonna tackle the gear progression that you might want to do when playing the Dominating Blow build. Now, on stream lately, I have been playing one of the two low-budget versions. In my build guide, you will be seeing the focus of the low-budget physical version of the Dominating Blow Summoner. However, the low-budget uh, addition to this is that you could do a Poison variant. I'm not a big fan of that personally. So I prefer the physical variant, and we're going to focus on the low budget and the gear progression for it. Obviously, there is a leveling guide that I did on the stream here for about a five-hour session. It's up on YouTube, so if you check the links down in the descriptions below, you'll see me leveling with Dominating Blow, which is a little bit slower than leveling with Absolution. But you can level with Dominating Blow, and that video shows me doing that in about a five-hour video. A lot of tips and tricks in that video. So if you want to check it out, do so. There's a lot of help you can get there for leveling with this build. But once you're done with that, you're going to start mapping. And the kind of gear that you'll be using when you're doing maps is going to be shit you found on the ground, right? And there's only going to be a couple of items that you want to look towards to start your gear progression. I do want to point out that I've been playing the low buddy version in a Tabula Rasa with a level 20 with 0% quality. Um, and I've done that in a Vault version, and this is how I've defeated endgame pinnacle bosses, such as Edril Worlds and stuff like that. And I've been clearing tier 16 maps. I've been a little bit squishy and we noticed a couple of stuffs that needed to be progressed at a certain stage and I'll tackle that in this video. I got to level 91 heading towards 92 in this character with this trash gear. We have a pair of gloves with just resistance and stats. We have a darkness and throne with some generic very bad jewels. Uh, we did get one with blind actually. This is a really nice jewel actually. Really. We got it for 5c or something. Um, we have level 20 gems across the board. We have a regular helmet with plus one, one level of minion skills. Should be plus two. Life is rather low on the helmet. But this is the trash we've been using. A generic stat fixing amulet with Testudo oiled. And um, a damage shield rather than a life recovery on block. Which would actually be the last upgrade you do on the low budget version of the build. And then we have a bone ring to sort out minion's resistances with a little bit of stats on it. And... Um, then we have a uh, generic stat life rest ring on the other one. And then the boots doesn't even have 30% movement speed. It's literally just 25% terrible life roll and everything. So we have absolutely horrific gear equipped. Jewel wise on the tree. We have an open slot here because I didn't feel like I would have wanted to spend more on this character. So I'm going to talk about this without that jewel socket even sorted. And then we have another jewel here with damage recently and some HP and there's a little bit of dexterity. I don't think I needed that, actually. I did not. Other than that, it's very straightforward. So let's talk about the gear progression. You are done with the campaign. You're about level 60 to 70, depending on how fast you went and how many kill monsters you killed. And in that stage, we made a little bit of a document that I'll be tackling. So the early mapping, what's really important to point out is that you need to make sure that you have a capped elemental resistances, and that is 75%. And with this tree, we're actually going for barbarism down here. It gives plus one max to fire us. So 76 fire percent and 75% cold, 75 lightning. And if you can get some chaos resistance, that is preferable. I have very little chaos resistance to again emphasize on a super, super, super low body version of this build. Now, the few times I did die in this character was mostly because of chaos damage, uh, or it was because when I was running the maps, I was running the Eater of Worlds mostly, and the altars can sometimes screw with you pretty heavily, such as lowering your resistances, lowering your block chance, and stuff like that. So as long as the map didn't have reduced block chance and stuff like that, a really, really high turbo maps was really rough for this build to handle. So extremely hard maps with the altars and the rituals, from uh, either Worlds or Searing Exarch will kill this or most builds in the game. So be a little bit cautious with those things. So again, make sure you have the enough attributes to cover your skill gems and gear, which I believe is 121 dexterity and strength is taken care of by itself thanks to the amount of strength nodes we're picking up. But 121 dexterity is required and the best way to solve this is via the, the amulet first. And if you need any more, you can benchcraft on your gear. You can even get your boots, for example, or even on your rings. After we ta uh, tackle these things, it's obviously preferable to have a 6-link. If you don't, it's fine to run a 5-link setup for it. However, getting a Tabula Rasa is rather cheap, but I'm going to show you a little bit of a neat trick, which I'm talking about in my guides. So in our case, we have 5 red colors and a 1 blue. And the way you can do it is first check the prices for Tabula Rasa, which you'll see that they're going for about 5 Chaos Corrupted in a pretty goddamn cheap, right? However... If you go to the socket filters and check that, hey, I want five red and one blue linked in a body armor. 
and uh, then you just search for this and you'll see that you'll find a bunch of corrupted pieces now even if this one doesn't have a single actually it does have life this is terrible but this one gives me armor it gives me strength it gives me dexterity it gives me life and even resistances for the same price as a tabula this is 10 times better than a tabula so this is the kind of chess pieces that you could look for even early stage league these are not too expensive you can scroll down here, you can even find one that's not corrupted. In this case, you can craft it with an Alcor, Benchcraft it, whatever you feel like. So you can buy something like this, which will be significantly better, especially for the defensive layers, as we want to have a lot of armor. So that's the kind of stuff that you want to look into getting in the early stage of mapping. The next one is to focus on getting a um, trigger weapon. Now I'm going to show you a crafted one, uh, but I don't think I have my old one left. Let me see if I can find it. I don't. So what I did was that uh, a trigger weapon, since this build requires a melee weapon to be used, all you need is for a suffix modifier to be open, so you can benchcraft the trigger socket spell when you use a skill with an 8 second cooldown. The reason for this is to allow ourselves to automate the approach of Desecrate, as well as your Curse, as well as the Bone Offering. So when you're casting abilities, you'll see here first my Desecrate pops out, next time I cast an ability, uh, we'll be able to blow them up with offering and the curse happening in between and you see that my block chance is significantly higher and it's almost capped with the flask of Rumi's concoction up so with those things sorted we're going to look at a trigger weapon you don't have to have anything else on the weapon when you start mapping your attack speed is going to be a little bit slow at this point and the next part is getting a plus one preferably two a plus one level of minion skills helmet the reason we go for plus one, which is what I've used to the end game on this, is to showcase how low budget and bad gear you can use to still finish all the game content. So this is what I've been using. Plus two is a significant boost of damage output. And that's all you need. However, the notes we made was that this provides a smooth clear, but higher yellow tier maps with hard rolls will be rough to handle. I did clear a bunch of red tiers with this as well. But again, the hard roll maps was very, very difficult with this kind of gear that we have in this list here. So once you're at this stage or at later yellow tier maps, you want to get the attribute fixer. And what I'm calling an attribute fixers is that you normally fix this with the jewelries. And this is how I fix it with my amulets. So this is a high dexterity amulet. Most mini builds will use something like this in the low body state. Uh, it, with life, never forget the life roll. And if you can fit any resistances on there, great. But focus on life and attributes on the amulet. And then you do the same thing with your rings. But do keep in mind that this build is going to want to have an actual bone ring. And make sure that if you need any stats, you sort that through the rings and amulet. And that's basically going to cover you. But don't forget that life roll. Um, and then the note says, since we're going for a darkness of the throne, this will be exclusively handled by our amulet and rings. So make sure one of those rings is a bone ring, yada, yada, yada. Next up is by fixing your required attributes, you can now have a much time, easier time navigating where you need to focus on with your items to cap your elemental rests, as well as looking for the possibility if the wallet allows for chaos resistances. So these steps is what you want to look for during the early mapping stage. Now, this will obviously create a baseline carry to progress further, but upon, once you reach the yellow tier maps, or the higher reality rather, you're going to want to be in a position where you're going to upgrade your character to the point where it will handle those smoothly as well. And that's where we look for a Gemini Claw. Attack speed is very important. And this is mostly because Gemini Claw gives us a mana on hit. Now, if you look at the base item for this, just looking at an actual Gemini Claw of item level 77, they cost the Chaos, if not less, an Alcor. So they're very cheap to purchase. And the way these are crafted is very simple. You purchase a Deafening Essence of Fear. They're going for two Chaos each right now. And I've shown this before, you could just smack a SS on it and then open up a suffix with an orb of annulment or if there is an open suffix already and just put a trigger craft on it and you're done. That's the lowest version of this. The next version is to craft essence of horror or fear on it till you hit a tier one attack speed, which requires item level 77, I believe. Uh, and once you've done that, you will then open up a suffix with a uh, orb of annulment and then put the trigger craft on. And the reason we do this is because that's how we get that prefix at the top there, giving us extra minion damage output. And it actually makes the build much, much smoother. To craft a bigger one, I would recommend looking for something like a fractured attack speed. And the reason we're doing a fractured attack speed here is that we are spamming essences till we get a perfect minion damage out of it. And then opening up the suffix slot 
So one of the suffix slots, so that we can do a prefix camp exchange reef or sorry, veil veiled chaos orb. And we rinse repeat this process till we can get the median attack speed or a veil on this modifier and then the craft uh, for the trigger as well. This is the high budget version. Actually, not really exp that expensive, but this is the high budget weapon, how it looks. Uh, very smooth, very effective. Um, and the reason we go for minion attack speed is obviously for our damage for our minions, but we benefit from that as well, thanks to spiritual command. So that's the gear progression of the, the claw. You want to start with a very basic version of this. I would recommend looking for the attack speed if you can afford it. Shouldn't cost you more than 80 chaos, maybe 90 chaos to make that happen. Probably a much, much very likely less than that. But that's the uh, expected cost right now. Then you want to get yourself a decently rolled darkness and throne with decent ghastly eye jewels. And the reason these ghastly eye jewels, when I say decent, is that they need to have a life roll. It's very important, like at least 30 plus life on every single one of your ghastly eye jewels. And if they can have minion damage when you use a minion skill recently, that's great. That modifier stacks. If you can get plus uh, flat physical damage to them, that's great. Any sort of combination of that together with a minion attack speed is great as well. And you can always get some extra resistances or attributes from this. And do keep in mind that the Darkness of the Throne will scale the modifiers on this jewel if you place them inside there. So those are the, the big initial steps to next progression for this kind of character. And the next up is your flask. Now, a lot of people seem to forget the importance of flask and how much value they bring to your character. Uh, for this build, we are looking at pretty high armor. So you can see I only have 11k. When I pop my flask, I have 19k. And if I pop this flask, I'm suddenly sitting on 23,000. And the reason this is the case is that if I pop my basalt flask, which gives me 20% more armor, and my granite flask, which gives me 1500 armor, you can see that our armor is going to go up from 11 to uh, 19,000. The reason I get up to 23.2 is because I have a Quicksilver with a modifier that says of the Avalon. This is a lower tier roll of increased armor during effects. Tier 1 would give me even more. This is the really important part of flask. Normally for builds like this that focus a lot on block, we want to have a prefix modifier that says gain charge when you're hit by an enemy because you actually count as being hit even if you block the attack. This is the tier 1 modifier called flagellant. Super, super, super good modifier to go for. However, the suffix in this case is an armor roll, so I'm going to show you a little bit of a neat trick to this, uh, which will look like this. So if I do this, and I click here... And I do this, we can see that we can look for a, uh, say, a granite flask, actually a basalt flask. You can just search for that like this. And put the charge when, you when you're when you hit by an enemy. I normally want to have three at the bare minimum. It's a tier one roll. And then I take away the percent roll on the increased armor, because I can show all the tiers. If I put this on a basalt flask, you can see that this is 100 chaos. That's the same tier that I have. But if I put this on a quicksilver instead you'll notice that the price is suddenly 35 chaos. Since the idea behind the flask is that I'm going to have all of them active when I'm in combat, it doesn't matter if this modifier right here is on the Quicksilver or if it's on the Basalt or Granite or whatever flask I'm running. It really doesn't matter as long as I have that modifier. So again, make sure that your magic flasks have the flagellant rolls and put in an Avalon in one of them. And the other one, I'm currently running a piercing, which doesn't do anything for me. The reason I did this is because the modifier that I do did want is the increased attack speed called of the dove. So if I do this and I say quick silver of the dove, which is a tier one modifier, uh, apparently that didn't work. Uh, I'm pretty sure it's off the dove at least. Um, that gives attack speed, one of them uh, does, and um, that was very expensive, so that's why I didn't do that. So the only flask modifier that I'm very that I'm looking for with this stage of gear progression is flagellant on both my magical flasks, and one of them needs to have the at least an Avalon, preferably a higher tier of increased armor. Um, so that kind of covers the, the flask uh, progression that I'm doing. Make sure you have an instant flask that also removes bleed, and other than that, I have a regular extra life flask here that doesn't really do much. Uh, outside of me taking dots damages, and that's it. So that's the important part of the flask. And when you get to higher body versions of, the, of any builds, the all your flasks will be essentially as good as they can get, which means you're paying about 100 chaos, maybe a divine, sometimes one and a half divine per flask later in the super high body versions. And that's because of how strong flasks are in the game right now. Um, other than this, make sure that all your gear slots have some sort of armor if possible, and the shield could be ES-based with the possibility of mini modifiers, but not a must. 
And the reason we talk about this is because of the defenses on, of our armor and how much we, we rely on surviving with this defensive layer is to make sure that every single gear piece that we have have some sort of armor roll on them so that we can actually make sure that we benefit from that. Obviously, that causes some issues with coloring. Obviously, there is a trick for this that you can use it for the benchcraft to color two of the sockets blue and then use jeweler's uh, craft on the... Um, on the bench craft to make the add two sockets and three sockets and two sockets and three sockets to the third socket is blue and then once that's blue you make it three socket four socket three socket four socket till the fourth one turns red right so there's there's a very easy way to do that and it's very cheap to do as well uh but make sure all your gear pieces have some sort of armor and i have an as base heal with minion damage so that we can actually have minion rolls here but the last step that you want to do is getting a life recovery on block shield now i do believe i have one so i can show you an example of this uh if i can find one let's see i do believe i had it here somewhere apparently i don't uh looks like this but this one has energy shield recovery on block but again you want to have a shaper or crusader influence shield that has this with a life recovery block you can obviously get an implicit modifier and synthesis versions of this as well however it's not a must it just makes the build much more reliable to do for higher tier mapping as it helps you sustain so well. And again, I'm level 91, progressing, and I'm in a situation where I just haven't bothered upgrading it and it's been fine to kill everything. So it's normally one of the most expensive pieces for the low body gearing. But as you can see, we don't need it. You could run with something like this, but it is recommended to get a life recovery block. And that literally covers the entire gear progression to get you from mapping into being fully geared for low body gearing. And as soon as you want to bring this build up to higher budgets, you'll have to look at the POB or POBs for the higher body versions and determine which which piece you want to upgrade first. And it depends if you're going for life or if you're going for CI builds and whatnot. But I hope this video helped you understand in what order you should upgrade your character and what to look for and some tips and tricks about how to balance everything. If you had use of this video, make sure you hit the like button, subscribe for more content, and I'll catch you guys in the next one. Until then, stay safe, keep rocking.